Number of czars. Here is the one thing tonight. It has been an amazing life for our 44th president, and I, like the rest of America, am inspired by his story. So, I'd like to share it with you tonight. The story of Barack Obama. It starts, well, it starts with his parents, Ann Dunham and Barack Obama Sr. Oh, sure. Sure, it begins like any other classic American love story when these two lovebirds met while taking a Russian language class. <laughs> How many of our parents met there taking Russian back in 1960 at the height of the Cold War? Oh, I just can't count the numbers that met that way. Then by 1961, they were married. And later that very same year, Barack Obama Jr. was born. President Obama so movingly told this story during a speech commemorating the anniversary of the Civil Rights March in Selma. But something stirring across the country because of what happened in Selma, Alabama, because some folks are willing to march across a bridge. And so they got together and Barack Obama Jr. was born. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Didn't that march happen in 1965? Pay no attention to the details. Sure, he was born in 1961, but we're going to cut him some slack today because today is his birthday. Oh, when little Barack Jr. was still three years old, still one year shy of the actual march in Selma, his parents divorced. Dad moved to Kenya and Mom married an Indonesian man. From ages 6 to 10, Barack Jr. attended school in Jakarta. Now, at the age of 10, living with his grandparents back in Hawaii, young Barack learned, learned that, well, he needed somebody to watch over him. He was yearning for a father figure. He eventually gravitated towards a family friend named Frank. Sure, some would point out that Frank was also known as Frank Marshall Davis, a guy who had a really thick FBI file. Sure, but he would become his childhood mentor. Frank happened to be a communist. The good news is, Mom already spoke Russian, so they could just talk for hours. Nobody knows for sure what mentor and pupil talked about. Probably baseball or something else that teenage boys enjoy. But definitely, definitely not communist propaganda. But now at 19, armed with a new world view and an eagerness to learn, Obama attended Columbia University. <laughs> of course, nothing ever bad comes out of Columbia. His mentor, Frank, would have been proud how he made use of his time there. Political discussions, the kind that at Occidental had once seemed so intense and purposeful, came to take on the flavor of the socialist conferences I sometimes attended at Cooper Union. Oh, sure, when he wasn't attending socialist conferences, and by the way, I remind you, he is definitely not a socialist. He stayed on campus and chose his friends carefully. To avoid being mistaken for such a sellout, I chose my friends carefully. The more politically active black students, the foreign students, the Chicanos, the Marxist professors and structural feminists and punk rock performance poets. You know, once his Marxist professor friends completed his education, it was on to the real world. In his mid-twenties, he, he moved to Chicago and became a community organizer. And while he was organizing things there, many friends and relationships budded. He met like-minded people like, like William Ayers. Ayers, one of the members of the founding members of the Weather Underground, that participated in the bombing of the Pentagon in 1972 and other bombings of government buildings. Oh, please. America, it's his birthday. Stop your hate mongering. Have you ever heard of forgiveness? Have you not made a mistake yourself? Okay, sure, you didn't blow up the Pentagon, but haven't you made mistakes? Of course, we make mistakes and we own up to them. We, we, we claim that they were a mistake and then we're forgiven and we move on. I don't regret anything I did to oppose the war. Anything I did to oppose the war, I don't regret. You wouldn't regret sending a bomb at a police station or sending a bomb at the Pentagon or the Capitol? You know, I don't look back on those things and regret them. Well... Nice, kind people just kept popping up in Obama's adult life. 
like slumlord Tony Resco helped him buy a nice house. Obama shared many dinners with former University of Chicago professor and terrorist sympathizer Rashid Khalidi. Obama thanked Khalidi for opening his eyes to the problems of the Palestinian and praised him in a send-off speech as Khalidi headed for Columbia University. About the same time, Obama also sought a relationship with God, and he eventually settled down with a quaint little Chicago church where his worldview continued to sprout. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God bless America. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God I've looked in the Bible, I, 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 but I'm still looking and just pouring over the scriptures every day to find that. But, but life was turning out grand for President Obama, a communist family mentor, super radical friends, a wonderful church. Could life get any better? Could it? Oh, well, it did when he met his soulmate, Michelle. For the first time in my adult life, I am proud of my country because it feels like hope is finally making a comeback. It does. Spiritually, physically, ideologically, the two were a perfect match. And they married, and the faithful Michelle would stand by her man on his political journey. Sure, in the old days, when he was running for the Illinois Senate, way, 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 way back in 1996, all the way to the Oval Office. Despite the meteoric success, Obama hasn't forgotten his roots, oh no. He is still honoring his communist child mentor with policy drafts. Oh, like some of them that you're about to see. And he's, he's still networking and organizing and meeting new and even more radical friends every day. Like, like Green Czar Van Jones, the self-avowed communist. Science czar John Holdren, you know, pro-putting sterilants in drinking water, forced abortions, and government confiscation of babies. <laughs> Come on, you haven't said that. How many times have you said that in your Russian language class? The regulatory uh, czar, uh, Cass Sunstein, champion for getting animals legal rights and representation. Energy czar Carol Browner, a socialist. I mean, I could go on forever about your crazy, wacky friends. But President Obama, that would take time away from you on your birthday. And I want to wish you happy birthday, but somehow I, it feels empty to me. It wouldn't be quite sufficient. So, Mr. President, let me say it this way. We, the collective, wish you a very, very happy birthday. Now, you know, I left something off of this red cake here. And, oh, I remember it. <laughs> oh, there we go. I know, I do only put in the yellow star on the cake because it was purchased by the Chinese because we don't have our own money anymore. <sighs> I guess sometimes wishes just don't come true.